So we are going to talk about um, VXLAN, which is actually one of the most uh, used technique in the industry today. And the reason it is most used is because it comes from um, VMware. Actually, originally from VMware, but then it has been adopted by almost every company, uh, including Cisco and Juniper and so on and so forth. So um, this is um, actually much more adopt, much more used than the other two techniques that you have learned so far, which are TRIL and NVGRE. So VXLAN stands for Virtual Extensible Local Area Network, and um, it's a L3 solution. So basically, you are going to extend Ethernet, but using layer 3. Um, so um, the, the problem that they're going to solve is that 4,096 VLANs are not sufficient in a multi-tenant data center. So first of all, they have multi-tenant data center. Each tenant might have their own VLANs, just like we had in Q and Q. So 4,096 cannot be divided very well, but on the top of that, there is a lot of overlap in the MAC addresses, VLAN addresses, and IP addresses of the tenants. So the tenants need to control their own, right? So this was the same problem that NVO3 is solving. Actually, we saw that, but basically VXLAN uh, is one of the members of the same group, so they have the same problem. And then a spanning tree is not good, so, so that we want to get rid of, and, and so on and so forth. So anyway, so <coughs> whatever we talked about in VO3, VXLAN is one of those members of the same solution that is being proposed in NVO3 group. But this is a solution which has already been implemented. Um, so the much of it might feel like repetitive because we have done it so many times. But you have this L3 network, which you want to give divide into multiple tenants network, um, and they want to do two raised to twenty four. VNIs. So VNIs are like VLANs, virtual networks. So they want to do 2 raised to 24. And um, obviously on the top of these 2 raised to 24, you could do your VLANs, which were 12 bits anyway. So 2 raised to 12, you could do there. But these many identifiers are available for the provider. Only VMs in the same VXLAN can communicate, which is the standard thing in the VLANs, is that if you are in the same virtual network, you can talk to each other. And the names for the V switches are V TEP, which we actually don't use that much, but basically tunnel endpoint. So what VXLAN does is just like NVGRE, it uses a tunnel between machines that are part of the same VNI virtual network. So it uses tunnel. In fact, it is very similar to NVGRE, except that they use different protocol. So they use tunnel, and the tunnel endpoint is called VTAP, which is generally a V switch, which is in the hypervisor. And so the V switches serve as VTAP, the tunnel endpoints, and they encapsulate the L2 frames in UDP over IP. All right, so if you remember NVGRE, we took um, um, basically GRE, um, <laughs> in one scheme, in the other scheme we did Ethernet over MPLS over GRE. So here we are going to just use UDP over IP and send to the destination where it will be opened and the packet will be delivered. So segments may have overlapping MAC addresses, VLANs, and, um, and but the thing is all of that is limited to one VNI. So this is one VNI, this is another VNI, this is another VNI. VNI is virtual network identifier. So this is one virtual network, this is another virtual network. And so inside that, the tenant can do whatever they want because the f the the routers here in the in the physical network they don't look at any of the things which are inside the payload. They just look at the headers of the VXLAN, which are simply saying take from here and go there. Is that clear? So here is an example of the tunnels. So we have one physical server in which we have two VMs. One is red, one is blue. This is red tenant, this is blue tenant. And there is a hypervisor. 
In the other server, there are three VMs, blue, red, and black. And in the other one, they have black and red. So you see, blue should be able to communicate with the blue, and they should not know anything about the reds. And similarly, about the red, they should be able to communicate among themselves, not knowing anything about the blue and the blacks, and so on and so forth. And so, VXLAN will dig these tunnels. Okay, blue tunnel, red tunnels, black tunnels. And um, the tunnels here are point to point, but you could also have point to multi point tunnels using IP multicasting. Okay, so there could be a tunnel which has these three points of the red into one tunnel. So any packet which is sent from here will go to those two, any packet sent from here will go to these two, and so on and so forth. All right, so this one shows three tenants, three virtual networks, and we have shown four tunnels for unicast, um, plus three tunnels for multicast, which are not shown. So the format is, encapsulation format is that we take whatever you want to send, which is the Ethernet packet, we put a VXLAN header in front of it, and then we take the whole thing and put into UDP in IP. Now let's look at the header one more time. So this is the MAC address for destination, this is the MAC address for the source, etc. This is a standard Ethernet packet, could have a VLAN as well. It is put inside a VXLAN header, which we'll discuss in a minute, but then it is put into UDP and then put into IP. Obviously to carry it in the data center from router to router, you probably have Ethernet connected, so I have shown the Ethernet header also. Okay. This doesn't have to be Ethernet, it could be point-to-point -point connectivity or whatever it is. So that, that is the layer 2 header for delivery, this is the layer 3 header for delivery, and this is the layer 4 header. Okay, and then you have the... Now VXLAN header has only four fields. Ma most important field is VNI. Everything else is reserved. So this is a reserve, this is the reserve, and these are some flags which indicate um, you know few things that um, I don't think we need to go into that detail but um, so the main thing is that this header is only one number which is VNI what what um, what tunnel what color you belong to okay so the VNI blue or VNI red or VNI black that is here now, another thing that protects here is the UDP header. UDP header is a, has a destination port. So when, when the packet comes to this hypervisor here, the destination port for red is different than the rest, destination port for black and blue. Right? So that is one thing is that you know you can you can, you when you come here you look at the you open the packet and it will certainly go to only wherever that port is being heard and in that port whatever process is there then we look at VNI number and see if it is for this VNI or not if it is you know by mistake and I don't see how it will get there but let's say black packet gets to a red tunnel and it will be thrown out there. Okay, so it's very simple. <coughs> IP over UDP, IP over UDP tunneling using VXLAN header, and VXLAN header is simply adding a VNI number. So outer VLAN tag is optional. So now here is VLAN tag here. <coughs> now this is being used by. This is not being seen by the tenants. Okay, so this is being used by the provider. Provider may have tried to define different areas inside its network for whatever reason. It has nothing to do with this here. Okay, so that is one thing is unlike trail where the in inner VLAN was taken and put outside here, this VLAN is provider VLAN and has nothing with the tenant VLAN. Um, the VM source VM apps to find the destination VM's MAC address and all L2 multicast unknown are sent by IP multicast. So before you can talk to anybody, you have to know their MAC address. 
and for MAC address you use the ARP protocol, ARP is the address resolution. And so that address resolution protocol uh, goes to the destination VM. Uh, no, actually is multi the, the ARPs are multicast. So ARP is actually a broadcast, it goes to everybody. Anybody knows the address of this particular MAC address, IP address of this MAC address, or MAC, ad sorry, MAC address of this IP address. In either case it is broadcast and all the broadcast unknown and multicast are done by IP multicast. Okay, that is where you need those three tunnels which are not shown here, which are multicast tunnels, IP multicast tunnels. So that is this point. Now destination VM sends a standard IP unicast ARP response. When the destination sees it, they say, oh yeah, my address is such and such, and it sends a unicast packet, which is a standard practice. The requests are multicast, the responses are unicast. They don't want to tell everybody in the whole world that this is the response. Okay. Anyway, destination VTAP. Now VTAP is the switch. Destination switch learns the inner source MAC to outer source IP mapping. You see? Inner source map. So when a packet is coming, it says, oh, this VM is there. Where? At this source IP. All right? So the switch, now remember VTAP is the switch. Switch can see all this header. VMs cannot. So the switch knows that next time I have to send to this MAC address, I will use this IP address. So there is a learning here and avoids unknown destination flooding for returning responses. So now what is going to happen is if you got a packet from this source, next thing you are going to do is send something to that source, that destination, right? So you are going to need that, so we don't need to do ARP or anything like that. Well, basically you won't do any ARP anyway because once you get a packet from some, every VM, every host, IP host, when they get a response, they have this standard practice that they know that this is the MAC address, this is the IP address of the other side, right? So they don't have to ARP only once Once you ARP to the other side and then they send you response, then you know their IP address and, and so on and so forth, right? Anyway, so, but the switch learns that. And so the switch then can send it to the right place. Any questions so far? Yeah. Right, good question. So basically the question is as follows, that the outer VLAN here, the packets which are in the outer VLAN, they cannot be going to other VLAN. So the, all the tunnels that belong to whatever color they belong to, they will be part of one VLAN. Right? You cannot have the red tunnel, some red tunnels in VLAN 1 and some red tunnels in VLAN 2. The packets will not go there. I mean, they can go there, but they will have to go through another router for nothing. So you might as well put all of them in one VLAN. But these VLANs might be for whatever reason the carrier, the provider wants to use them. You know, it may want to keep its accounting traffic separate from the customer traffic and keep, you know, north customers from the south customers and so on and so forth. So it can separate, it can divide into, into VLANs. But once you are in one VLAN, you stay inside that VLAN. Is that the question? That's the answer, right? Okay. So VLAN encapsulation format, IGMP is used to prune multicast tree. Now this is a detail of multicasting in IP. I am not, I haven't talked about IP multicasting here, but that is something that we teach again in 473. And in multicasting, what happens is there is something called IGMP, Internet Group Multicast Protocol. That is how you register for multicast. Basically, using an IGMP message, you can tell your router, look, I am interested if you get any multicast for let's say all um, people listening to YouTube, all nodes listening to YouTube. I mean, that's not actually multicast, but there are well-defined multicast addresses. If you want to, if, if, some, if you get a packet to this address, please send it to me. So you register. And that way, if some, nobody registers in my tree, then I will not send packets any further in that tree, in that subtree, okay? So that actually helps, um, you know, uh, unnecessary traffic going through. That is called prune the multicast tree is that if people have to register and if they don't register, we don't send anything in that whole subtree. Seven of eight bits in the flags are reserved. So now we saw most of the thing in here was reserved, reserved, reserved. Flags has eight bit, even though out of those seven are reserved. 
So there is not that many flags. Only one flag, which is I flag, which says that the VNI field is valid. So that's all there is. One bit which says that VNI field is valid. If that bit is zero, means the VNI field is not valid. Whole thing is just null. Okay. UDP source port is a hash of the inner MAC address, MAC header, and allows load balancing using equal cast multipath. So this is a technique which is used in many other places, and I want to just explain that. What happens is, when you want to do multicast, uh, equal cast um, multipath, you took this header from beginning to the end, and then you decide you hash it, this whole thing, Actually, you probably don't need to do the Ethernet part, but IP header and the UDP header, you take this and you hash it and this tells you whether to go this way or that way or that way or that way. You have multiple paths. And you don't want the packets, some packets go this way, some packets go that way. So basically you want to make sure that all of your packets take one way. So this header here, the port number here is selected so that, you know, it will be basically better hash, it will not collide with somebody else's, you know, it will not hash to the same place as somebody else's uh, source port number, uh, source port. Source ports are arbitrary, you can select whatever number you want. And so here they are selected intelligently so that hash results in a unique direction. VMware, uh, VMs are unaware that they are operating on a VLAN, they don't see any of that part. And VTAP needs to learn the MAC addresses of other VTAPs, other switches. Uh, a VXLAN gateway switch can forward traffic to and from non-VXLAN networks. Okay? Switch can traffic from non-VXLAN. So I haven't shown you the gateway here, but there could be another node here which would be a gateway. And if there's something which is non-VXLAN, then they will come to that router and then they will come here. All right, I actually wanted to finish this summary and maybe I will continue this again next time in case you have any question. But the summary is that the VXLAN solves the problem of multi-tenants multi and um, a servers may have a VMs belonging to many different tenants. They will not see each other's traffic, no changes to VMs, hypervisors are responsible for all the details and then UDP is used for the you know, encapsulation.